Hey everybody, it's Pierce, head of product here at Marpipe. Let's talk about DPA, dynamic product ads. A recent study by Facebook shows that advertisers using DPA on Facebook and Instagram see a 70% lift as opposed to other formats. So what is it? That'll be the intro. Thinking about using DPA, first think, am I selling things online? If you are, then yeah, you should. Look at Latico here, they should be using DPA because they're selling things online. They have all these different bags, different colors, different sizes, all unique, all ready for somebody to buy them. This store information probably lives in Shopify where normally you're managing the inventory, you're adding new products, things are going out of stock, you're doing all that from there. In order to advertise these, we need to get these out of Shopify and into Facebook. How do we do that? Well, first we need to make a feed. And essentially a feed is just a file, like a CSV file that represents everything that's in your store. Here's a CSV of everything in Latico's store. We have all of these rows, which represent every single product or SKU in that store. SKU means shopkeeping unit. A shopkeeping unit is a specific item that someone can buy that's sitting in your warehouse. So think like yellow handbag, size large. Each of our SKUs has other information that we're gonna feed into Facebook, like brand, color, price, title, condition, description, availability. All these things help us target and find the right products to sell to people. So we have a feed and we need to get that into Facebook. First of all, we're gonna to need to take this feed file and we're gonna host it online. The reason we put this, this feed file online is because we need it to update as our products in our store update. So if something goes out of stock, it gets removed. If we add new products, it gets added, whatever. Once we have that file online, it's time to make a catalog in Facebook. There's a whole section of Facebook called Commerce Manager. In Commerce Manager is where we're gonna have our catalogs. To make a new catalog, all I have to do is hit the Add Catalog button. Once I hit the add catalog button, I'm gonna hit e-commerce because we're selling things online. Then on this next page, all I need to do is give my catalog a name. Latico and sample. Awesome, we've made a new catalog. We can make as many catalogs as we want. They're really just empty containers until we put our product information in there using our feed. Now that I have my new catalog, I'm gonna upload a feed. To do that, I go to data sources. Under data sources, I will then choose data feed. I will say, yes, I do know how to upload a data feed. And then from this selection, I'm gonna choose URL. Since we put our file into a URL and are hosting it online, all we need to do is get that link to that file and paste it in. Since we know that things are gonna update in our store as products go out of stock and we add new ones, we need to make sure that Facebook is gonna refresh our catalog. To do that, we're gonna set daily syncing because things don't change that much in our store. So now, all of those things in our spreadsheet are getting uploaded into Facebook. Ooh, look at that progress bar. Alrighty, now that our feed is almost done uploading, we can start to see our items come into our catalog. When we click the items tab, we can see everything that came in from our file that we were hosting online. The important thing about catalogs is that you can't have the same item in here twice. The IDs that we saw here in our feed, they're gonna leave you one of those in every catalog. So if we wanna try something else, like have a different image for these, we're gonna to have to have multiple catalogs. Something to note. Another thing that we can do now that we've uploaded our feed into our catalog is we can make product sets. Product sets are groups of items that we can advertise together once we start making ads out of our feed. To make a new product set, all I have to do is go to sets <laughs> and then click create set. From there, I use filters from the information in my feed to group certain products, like every, every sandal or every crossbody bag, something like that. The last important part of catalogs is the events section. One of the best parts about DPA is that it saves audience information in order to optimize ad performance. To do that, it's gonna to need to match the products in our store from the pixel with the products that we uploaded in our feed into the catalog. So all we have to do is go to events and then set up tracking by connecting our pixel into this catalog. And I click it. Oh, there it is. Turn that on. We have our feed imported into Facebook. Now it's time to turn all of that into some ads. So let's go to Ads Manager. We're out of Commerce Manager. We're going to Ads Manager, one of the other mini sections of Facebook. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click Create. So we're gonna create a new campaign. And there is a bunch of different ways to make catalog ads. So let me show you the way that most people are used to, but is kind of getting outdated at this point. Once I make a new campaign, I'm gonna click sales and I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna choose manual sales campaign. From this next screen, there's gonna be divergent paths here. 
there's this catalog section here in this main part. If we toggle that on, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make this a catalog campaign. It's gonna be locked into this catalog that we choose. So once I choose one of these, like Shopify product catalog, I can't change it later. I'm not gonna be able to advertise other catalogs in this campaign. It's all gonna come back to this one that I've, that I've already set up. So from there, once I select this catalog, I'm gonna hit next. So here's another point where things are gonna be a little bit different. In the ad set, usually we're setting our targeting. Since we set the catalog up at the campaign level, we're gonna have different options for targeting. If we scroll down to the audience section, we can see that there's two options. Find prospective customers, even if they haven't interacted with your business, or retarget ads to people who interacted with your products on and off Facebook. Those are two broad different types of catalog campaigns. The first one, find prospective customers, that's what people call DABA. So it's prospecting to find people who've never seen you before, ne never heard, you're looking for new customers. And usually when you choose this route, it's harder, it's more expensive to get those customers. If we click retarget ads to people who've interacted with us before, that's called DPA, usually. If you hear DPA versus DABA, mainly DABA is talking about prospecting, where DPA is talking about retargeting people who've already maybe added to cart or visited your website before. So when we set up a catalog ca campaign, they make it really easy. This is sort of a, a fill in the blank kind of form that we're gonna fill out here where Facebook's gonna make this retargeting ad for us. So if we choose this, then we see what kind of, who we wanna retarget. Do we wanna do people who viewed or added the cart but not purchased? Okay, sure. And then we click 14 days or we could do like 90 days, for example. Or we could do abandoned cart, added to cart but not purchased, 28 days. We have all these options and you can do this without setting the catalog on at the campaign level, but it is a little bit of an easier setup if we do it this way. The other thing we see at the ad set level when we do this type of campaign is we see the product set. So in one of these sections, oh yeah, we see promoted products. So we could just choose all products, but at, when you do this type of campaign, you can also lock each ad set to a certain product set. So if we had bags, for example, this ad set, every ad within it is only gonna be targeted to bags. So now we're gonna hit next to start adding ads. So we see here at the ad level, it's nothing really too new. We're gonna choose just regular optimized placements. Um, and then when we see in the creative section, it's automatically set it up to pull from the catalog and the product set bags. Um, it's automatically pulled in headline as the product name, and we can set any other settings that we usually do from here. It's basically like any other ad at this point. Um, but we're, what we'll see in a bit is that you can actually do all this without setting the catalog at the campaign level. You can make a normal campaign and then add the catalog to the ads after the fact. So to do that, if we exit out of this, we'll go back and we'll say create a new campaign and we'll choose sales like we did before. And then we'll choose Advantage Shopping Plus. So this is definitely the easiest way to do this. And then we have a lot less things that we need to choose for this. So on the campaign side, we'll scroll around until we find our audiences. So in an ASC Plus campaign, the audiences are kind of chosen for you. And usually what it's automatically doing is setting kind of a mix of strategies between prospecting and then retargeting. You don't really need to set up much from this perspective. You see here that it's, it's breaking down the audience by people who've purchased in the past 30 days as the retargeting audience, and then everybody else is gonna be prospecting. So it's not, it's not something that you really need to fine tune or, or look at too much. You're really just setting the daily budget and letting it do its thing. Let's just look at the creative. Once we go to an ad, we see the normal, select Facebook page, Instagram, they create ad. And then here on the creative source, instead of a manual upload, like adding a video or an image, just uploading from our computer, we go to catalog. So this is similar to what we saw in the catalog campaign, but now we're doing this at the ad level and we have a lot more flexibility. Once I choose catalog, you see that it chooses the catalog for me. I can change that. I scroll down to the creative source. So I can choose any other catalog that I want. And then you can also opt to choose a product set. Then at the ad level, there's different settings here. We could choose to advertise just a single product. So if you choose single image or video, it's gonna pick up for each ad that somebody actually sees, it's just gonna be one image and that's coming from, from our catalog that we choose. If we choose carousel, it's gonna dynamically choose different products, different sets of products to show to a single person. So if they scroll through the carousel, they see different products from your store. The, the products that Facebook chooses to show to people is based off of the, the audience information that it collects from your pixel, connected to your feed, connected to your catalog. So it's all a closed loop where Facebook's optimizing by the information that it gets based on how people act on your store. And then the third option here that's a little bit less popular is a collection type. So what this does is basically, instead of linking anybody to a single product when they click on that ad, it's gonna link them to a collection. Um, it's not 
quite the same thing. I think it, for most people, they should be choosing carousel or single image or video because it's gonna target those products specifically to whoever thinks it's most likely to buy them. And if you have carousel on, by default, it's just gonna show different products to each person as they scroll through, but you can also have it show additional images for each product as they scroll through. So if you choose slideshow down here, what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna play multiple images from your store. So like you have your main image, then you have maybe somebody, a lifestyle image with someone holding that bag or whatever, or maybe different colors. It's gonna slide through those when it shows each product instead of just showing that one main image. Which, depending on what you're trying to do, if you have really good additional images, maybe this is something you wanna check, or maybe it's something you wanna test. Um, that's really easy to do since you can have multiple ads with different catalogs and different settings. Okay, so this is an ASC Plus campaign. Let's look at the last way to do it, which is just more of a standard. We set up the, we set up DPA or broad prospecting on our own. New campaign, sales of course, and I'm gonna choose manual again. So now we're at this, we're in the campaign settings and this time I'm not gonna check off the catalog toggle button. Actually, what I'm gonna do is just hit next, ignore that. Then I'm gonna go down to our audience for this ad set that's automatically here. So if I wanted to do broad prospecting, what I would do is basically leave this how it is and then I'm gonna exclude, uh, let's see, let's exclude current customers. I wanna find new, uh, new people to target, so I'm gonna make an audience that's everybody minus the people that already know about us. If instead of broad prospecting, I wanna make a remarketing audience, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete what I just did. I'm not gonna exclude uh, existing purchasers. What I'm gonna do is target people who have engaged with us before. So let's say I want to choose people who've been on our websites, and then I'm also going to choose uh, people who've purchased in the past 180 days. They've already heard about us, and we're gonna target them again with new ads. Usually the retargeting ad sets that you're running are gonna have a higher ROAS. It's a lot easier to get previous customers to purchase compared with broad prospecting. But to grow your overall business, you're gonna to wanna to have a healthy mix of prospecting too so that you can get new customers that you can then retarget later. So the only difference between doing this method and the first method that we covered is that in this method, we're not turning on the catalog ads at the campaign level. And because of that, we can set up our audiences and our ads exactly how we want. And the other way, Facebook makes a nice little neat form for you. And this way we have to know what we're doing. But the difference is now when we go to ads, we have a lot more freedom. So if we click next, we're gonna to go to the create ad section. Um, for this ad, we see at the top here, we, we can either use advantage plus creative for catalog or we can leave that alone. If we leave it alone, then we can set up and just upload different, different images like we would normally. But if we turn this on, then we can choose our catalog format. We choose the catalog just like before. We choose the product set. For the primary text, we could choose description. Um, for the headline, we could have product name really neat feature that allows you to change the copy dynamically. So from there, we would probably make different ad sets depending, so maybe one for retargeting, one for broad prospecting, and then in each of those, we could have different ads that are advertising specific product sets or have different copy or set up just in slightly different ways. We can even put in standard video ads or standard image ads in any of these ad sets with these catalog ads. All right, looking back, what have we talked about? So we took our store, Let's Eco Leather, we took all the products from the store, made it into a feed, put that online, and then uploaded that into Commerce Manager into a new catalog. Now all of our products are taken from our store, and now they're in Facebook. And then we learned all the different ways that we can structure those, take them from the catalog, and then put them into Ads Manager. A few things to avoid in Ads Manager, like we talked about, really probably don't need to make a catalog campaign. You don't need to turn the catalog switch on at the campaign level. If you don't do that, you have full control in the ads to choose which catalog you want to use, choose which product set, diversify and have non-catalog ads next to catalog ads, a much better option. And then to reiterate some of the lingo, when people say DABA, they're talking about prospecting. So very little audience targeting at all, we're just going to anybody, but then we're excluding people who already know about our business. That's DABA or dynamic prospecting or broad, pros broad prospecting, whatever people call it. We're talking about, usually when people are talking about DPA, they're talking about retargeting or remarketing which is targeting specifically people who already know about us. Those campaigns typically have higher ROAS, but there's less people in that audience, so we spend less on them. When we're talking about prospecting, there's a lot more people in that audience. We spend a lot more on it, but it's not gonna perform quite as efficiently as re remarketing is. But in your ad account, you need a healthy mix of both. So you can have those as different ad sets in a single campaign. You can have them as different, different campaigns entirely. There's a lot of different ways to set it up. And also in Advantage Plus shopping campaigns, 
both are happening automatically. We saw in that screen that Facebook really doesn't give you many options. You just sort of plug in the budget and then you, you make ads. Diversify the ads with catalog ads and add in other videos or other additional creative in there and let Facebook do the rest. So that's been a little bit on DPA. Now it's time for you to try. In the next video, we'll take it to the next level. We'll show you some tips and hacks on how to get the best performance.